All right, gonna do a video exposing this heretic Watchman D. Uh, he's a full-on work salvation papist. He's a Roman Catholic, essentially. Uh, he teaches Roman Catholicism. He may not be, you know, the whole Mary idolatry and that kind of stuff, but he's a Roman Catholic in the sense of his false gospel that he preaches is essentially the same thing as Roman Catholicism. That's why I call these people the sinless perfection, conditional security heretics. I call them work. They call, I call them papists because they're basically just preaching Catholic doctrine, but. He uh, teaches a false gospel of baptism of regeneration. He teaches you have to stop sinning to be saved. Okay, repentance is not you have to stop sinning. Repentance of sins, according to Second Corinthians chapter seven, verses uh, eight to eleven, is having God the sorrow for your sins, having God the sorrow for sinning against a holy righteous God. Okay, you can't stop sinning to be saved. That's a heresy. That's a false gospel. Okay, repenting of sins, turning from sin is done after you're saved, and it's done. A part of your sanctification process. It's not done for salvation. You see these heretics who who teach this false uh, false repentance. They mix salvation and sanctification together. They mix the two together. Salvation happens the moment you believe the gospel. Okay, repentance and faith in the gospel. Uh, sanctification is a lifetime process done by the work of the Holy Ghost. You know, getting sin out of your life, cleaning your life up. It's not done for salvation. It's not done to stay, to be saved or stay saved. Okay. And if you're saying that it is done for salvation, you're a heretic. You're going. You're, you're lost. And this guy, he's lost. He's not saved. Okay, he's a full-on work salvationist. He doesn't believe in the righteousness, righteousness of Jesus Christ. Okay, if you don't believe, if you believe you can lose your salvation, then you're you're lost because you're denying the sufficiency of Christ's uh, payment for your sins on the cross. Because you're saying you have to do something to keep yourself saved. It works. It's false gospel. And if you read Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 to 15. Satan was the first person who essentially wanted to earn his way to heaven. He was saying, I'll become like the most high. I'll ascend, you know, above the throne of God. Paraphrasing, of course. But self-righteousness, like the like this heretic has, this watchman D, comes from Satan. He, you know, he's a child of Satan. That's simple. And John 8, 44 says that basically the children of Satan will do the lust of their father. Well, the lust of their father is self-righteousness. It's trying to earn your way, earn your salvation. So people like this guy, this watchman D heretic... He's a child of Satan. He's doing the lust of his father, basically. But, sorry, I got something caught in my throat. Ooh, there we go. Sorry about that. Just ate a, ate a big meal. But um, he basically says, uh, he quotes from Acts chapter 2, typical of all these charismatic heretics. Acts chapter 2, uh, and he'll say, so you, have to be repent, you have to repent and be baptized, okay? And they teach this false... Uh, pagan gospel of baptismal regeneration, okay? Baptismal regeneration is a pagan heresy, okay? It comes from paganism, okay? It's not scriptural at all. And we're going to see who Acts chapter 2 is being addressed to, okay? Because the thing you have to understand about the book of Acts is that it's a transitional book, okay? Not every part of the New Testament is written to Christians, okay? Getting ahead of myself, but here, here we're going to show he's going to preach his false gospel of baptismal regeneration. I had to do this video because um, this guy is just spreading heresy like crazy. He denies uh, all kinds of key biblical doctrines. Now, something I do agree with him on is that the Trinity is a pagan doctrine. I agree with him on that, but that's pretty much one of the only things I would agree with him on. Um, he's a lot, he's a lost papist. He's on his way to hell, and he needs to repent, drop his self righteousness, and drop his pride, and repent, uh, which is have God destroy for your sins, and truly get saved. He's lost. That, just that simple. But I'm gonna show you this video. Earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Now let's fast forward to Acts chapter 2. What we see is Peter, uh, and look, I urge you to go back and read this, but for time's sake, I'm not going to sit here and read the entire chapter to you. The Holy Ghost falls on uh, the disciples, and they begin to preach, and they spake in a language that was never previously spoken on earth before. They spoke in tongues where every single person that was there who were of many tongues and many nations, the Jews that were there, heard them in their own language. He, to he told them, he informed them that they crucified Jesus Christ, okay? And just 40 or 50 days before this, they were shouting, crucify him, crucify him. These are the group of people that crucified Jesus Christ. So he, he, he gives them this information. He proves it from the scriptures as he goes through the Old Testament. And by the end of his speech, 
and uh, they believed what he said. And it said, now when they heard this, in verse 37, it says, in Acts 2, 37, it says, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? In other words, yeah, we crucified the Christ. They accept that truth. They believe everything he said. They believe that Jesus was the Christ and that they had crucified him. They are now asking Peter and the apostles, what shall we do? Now here he's going to inject his charismatic heresies and the pagan doctrine of baptismal regeneration into his false gospel. And Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, so he said, um, repent. So he said, repent. What did he mean saying that to them right there? Okay, a repent is the word, the Greek word is metanoia. It means a change of mind. Okay, now you'll hear. Well, change your mind to believe, to unbelieve, right? Why, why do you assume that? It just means that. Because let me let me point something out. Let, change your mind, believe on God, and then when you believe on God, you'll get baptized by the Holy Spirit. Well, right here you're seeing it says, right here you're seeing it says, repent and be baptized. Well, and you're so he said earlier, oh, I'm not going to read the whole chapter. Well, why did he not read the whole chapter? Let's see what the whole let's see what the context is. Okay, who is being who is being spoken to in Acts chapter two? You see, again, this is why he won't read the whole verse, the whole chapter. Okay. And it's funny because he just gave it away earlier. He actually gave it away who he was speaking to. Acts chapter 2, verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Okay? Then he goes down. You know, um, verse 14. And Peter, standing up with, the, with the eleven, lifted his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judah, and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem. Who is, who is, who is the uh, people being spoken to in Acts chapter 2? It's not Christians, it's Jews, okay? Unbelieving Jews, okay? And, you know, Acts chapter 2, verse 16 talks about, you know, the signs in the end times, okay? This isn't written to Christians, Acts chapter 2. But again, these heretics always had to run to Acts chapter 2 to prove their false gospel, okay? He wasn't speaking, and you know, verse 22, ye men of Israel, okay? It's speaking to the nation of Israel, okay? Again, I said this at the beginning, Acts is a transitional book, Okay? There's uh, transitional books, different dispensations. They transition. Oh, dispensation at the heresy. Hey, the word dispensation appears four times in the King James Bible. Okay, let me show you those verses. Dispensation. Let me search that word up. First Corinthians nine seventeen, Ephesians one ten, Ephesians three two, and Colossians one twenty five. The word dispensation is a scriptural term. You read, you read Ephesians three one to seven, talks about how the gospel was revealed to Paul. It was hidden in other ages. Okay, dispensationalism is scriptural, contrary to what the non-dispensational heretics will tell you. Okay, and that's a whole other issue. But uh, the Acts is a transitional book. Okay, it's the transitioning from the gospel being presented to the Jews to now both Jews and Gentiles. Okay, uh, Acts chapter two. There are no Christians anywhere in Acts chapter two. Okay, Paul is our apostle. Okay, Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles. If you're a Christian, Paul is your apostle. Okay, not Peter. Uh, there is some good stuff in the Epistles of Peter. Um, but it's not completely written to a Christian, okay? Let me show you what, what, um, what is for Christians in the book of Acts. Again, it's called rightly dividing, 2 Timothy 2.15, rightly dividing the word of truth. Acts chapter 20, uh, verse, verse 26. Sorry, it wasn't verse 26. It was, uh, uh, was it 26? I think it was Acts chapter 20, let me just... Make sure it was the right one. Yeah, it was actually sorry, it was Acts twenty twenty one, not twenty six. Okay, so Paul is now preaching again. Keep in mind, Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles. Romans eleven thirteen and Romans fifteen sixteen. Okay, let's see what Paul says, and let's see if Paul teaches baptism regeneration. Okay, Acts twenty twenty one, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God, and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And be, and be baptized. Oh, wait, it doesn't say that. Okay? Repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Let me show you that one more time. I was about to do a little hand motion, but... Uh, Acts chapter 26. I believe it's verse 20. Okay? Again, this is uh, Paul 
again preaching. Okay, context is Paul speaking. Acts 20, 26. But showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God okay, and do works meet for repentance. Okay? Works come after your salvation. Works meet for repentance. It comes after your salvation. You're not doing it for salvation like this uh, papal heretic, uh, Watchman D, wants you to think. Okay? So repentance, that you repent and turn to God. Okay? You have God the sorrow, and then you turn you, you turn to God. You put your faith in Jesus Christ. Okay, again, repentance towards God and faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ. You repent, you have your God the sorrow for sinning against the holy, righteous God, and you turn to God. You turn to Jesus Christ, who is God, obviously. Not, again, you're not going to get into that whole issue. But where does Paul say anything about uh, baptism or regeneration? He doesn't say anything about that. Okay, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go to another verse of scripture. And one more thing on this thing of sinless perfection, too. I, I might have mentioned this at the beginning. He's also a sinless perfection heretic, too. And he believes you have to be sinlessly perfect, which, again, is a very satanic heresy. Gonna, I'll prove that later on. Just bear with me. So 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Paul is now defining the gospel. Let's see what he says. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preach, which I preach unto you, also which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. Okay. By which also ye are saved, if ye keep memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. And, you know, the conditional security uh, papists, heretics, will say, oh, see, you have to keep memory. Okay? If you read other scriptures, okay, let me show that verse. Because if you believe in vain, it means you're a false convert. It doesn't mean you lost your salvation. Okay? Let me show you those verses. So Paul warns about false brethren in 2 Corinthians 11.26 and Galatians 2.4. There is such thing as a false convert, false brethren, like Paul warns about. So, again, it's about false converts. When it says you believe in vain, it means you were never saved to begin with. You just had a head knowledge, but you were never truly saved. Uh, verse 3, For I delivered unto you uh, all of that, sorry, of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, Verse 4, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. And it goes down. Um, where is baptiz where is, uh, baptismal regeneration there? It doesn't say that. He died for your sins, according to the scriptures. Again, he's defining the gospel in the context. There's no mention of being baptized for in the... Was it uh, repent ye therefore and be baptized for the remission of sins? Paraphrasing, of course. Like it says in Acts 2, uh, 38. He doesn't mention that here. Because he's speaking to Christians. Acts 2 is written to the Jewish people. It's not written to Christians. Okay? You have to rightly divide. See, these heretics don't understand the difference between Israel and the church. Okay? They mix the two together. Now, on this thing of... Um, actually, well, let me go to one more scripture just to back this whole thing up. Here's actually a really good verse. To, here's actually a really good verse you want to use against uh, some of these self-righteous uh, heretics like Watchman D. Romans chapter 10 verse, uh, actually, sorry, verse 2. Actually, I'll just go to verse 1. That's where you get a full context. Romans 10, 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is they, that they might be saved. So he, he's talking about Israel, but he's not speaking to Israel. That's the big difference. You know, because the people who reject Romans 10 will say, well, it's about it, it's speaking to Israel. No, he's talking about Israel, but not to the Jews. It's not written to Jews. Just want to kick the whole Romans 10 is a false gospel, you know, satanic movement that it is. Verse 2 For I bear record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Look at verse 3. Good uh, verse used against these heretics like Watchman D. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. If you're trying to earn your salvation by baptizing, by remaining in holiness and enduring to the end, fearing that you lose your salvation, you're not submitting yourself to the righteousness of God. You're trying to establish your own righteousness, and you're going to end up in hell because of it. Okay? Verse 4, Romans 10, 4. For Christ is the end of the law, for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Verse 5. For Moses describeth, and here's actually another good verse to prove, you know, dispensationalism, that there was an element of works that were involved in the Old Testament, contrary to what the non-dispensational heretics will say. Uh, verse 5, for Moses described with the righteous, righteousness which is of the law. Righteousness which is of the law. Okay, The law of a self-righteousness. They have to keep that in the Old Testament. 
at the man which doeth those things, those things shall live by them. Verse 6, But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above. You jump down to verse 9, That if thou shalt confess, Romans 10, 9, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Verse 10, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 11, For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him, shall not be ashamed. And one of the things the verse I was using was, uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, when it says the scripture say it, it's referring back to the Old Testament. Uh, it's referring to Isaiah chapter 20, 28, verse 16. Just a little, a little reference there. When, when it says the scripture saith in verse 11, it's referring to Isaiah 28, verse 16. But just wanted to point that out. Verse 12, For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord is rich uh, is overall is rich unto all that call upon him. Verse 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Again, where is baptismal regeneration? Okay, Biblical salvation in this current dispensation under the age of grace, repentance towards God, you have God the sorrow for your sins, Okay, and a faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ, and then you call upon the name of the Lord as a, a natural reaction. You know, Matthew 12 talks about how the out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. Okay? That's biblical salvation. There's no baptism. Baptism is done after your salvation. It's symbolic. Okay? It's it's symbolizing, you know, you being dead with Christ and then you being risen again. It's symbolic. It's not... Uh, let me show the verse on that one, actually. So I just want to make sure I get all the scriptures covered. Leaving no stone unturned. Uh, I think it's uh, Colossians 2, if I'm not mistaken. Again, I'm not, not going to leave any stone unturned. Colossians 2... Uh, verse 12 okay this is what baptism is in the new under under the uh people call it the church age under the age of grace okay and acts 2 it was part of your salvation but that's not the case today uh, uh, colossians 2 12 buried with him in baptism wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of god who hath raised him from the dead okay baptism is symbolizing you being buried with him okay? and then you rise up again it's a symbolic thing. It's not a uh, part of your salvation. So, yeah. Another verse on that is Romans chapter 6 and verse 3. Know ye not uh, that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? And I'll say, see, you got to be baptized in Jesus Christ. Let's see what, what this baptism was. It was symbolic. Romans 6, 4. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that is, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, uh, even so we should also walk in newness of life. Okay? You should live a holy, holy righteous life. You should live, yeah, um, you should avoid sin. You should avoid committing sin. Okay? You still have a sinful nature. That is true. Uh, Romans chapter 7, verses 13 and 25 talks about that. And of course they'll try to say, well, um, that was before Paul's salvation. Uh, you read the verse. It says, you know, O wretched man that I am, present tense. And you read verse 25. Uh, Paul talks about, you know, serving the law of God, which you can't do as a lost person. So Paul was indeed talking about uh, currently his struggle with sin after his salvation. So don't let the self-righteous, sinless perfection heretics try to twist that too. But uh, baptism is basically symbolic. You're buried with him in death and then you're raised up again. It's got nothing to do with your salvation. But humans do have a sinful nature. You can read Galatians chapter 5. What the? Oh. Verses. Let me check the verse. Galatians 5, 16 to 17. Okay? Talks about the lust of the flesh and how your flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. Okay? You have a sinful flesh. You can't help it. Okay? And anyone who says you don't have it is a lost heretic. More scripture on that. Again, leaving no stone unturned. Romans chapter 8, verse 3. More scripture proving you have a sinful flesh. Uh, Romans 8, 3. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, for in sin condemned sin in the flesh. Okay? We have a sinful flesh. And, of course, again, they have to deny, one of the big heresies is they, is they deny that Adam gave humans the sin nature, which again, plain denial of scripture, Romans 5.12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. 
or verse 13, for until the law, sin was not in the world, but sin was not is not imputed when there is no law. Okay, verse 14, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, uh, even over them had, that had not sinned after the multitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was that was to come. Okay, so the fact that so since by one man sin entered into the world by Adam's sin he brought a sin nature into human race essentially, and when it says death reigned from Adam to Moses, why do humans die? You know why do we die physical deaths? Because we have a sin nature because our bodies are corruptible. You know, if you're if you're a sinlessly perfect, then why do you even die a physical death? Why do you have health problems? Why do you, you know, get a headache in the morning? Or why do you, you know, why do you cough? Why do you get a cold? Okay, you're not sinless. Your body is corruptible. If you're a sinless, you would not have you would, you would not experience physical death. You would not experience pain because that means your body would not be corruptible. But it is. Okay, and again, you know, for for a nevertheless death reign from Adam to Moses. Or what is the wages of sin? Verse Romans six twenty three, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So if you're not sinning, if you're sinlessly perfect, then you're not earning wages to die. Okay, because the wages of sin is death. I mean, it's just ridiculous how these people twist the scriptures. But on this thing of the sinless perfectionism being satanic, I'll show you that proof on that. Roman or uh, John chapter eight. In verse 44. I'm going to do a little comparing of scripture with scripture. John 8, 44. So talking about children of the devil. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Okay? So children of the devil, they'll do the lust of their father. Okay? Now, what are the lusts of Satan? Well, Isaiah chapter 14 starting at verse 12 how art thou fall how art thou fall how art thou got it right this time fallen from heaven o lucifer son of the morning how art thou cut to the ground which did weaken the nations verse 13 for thou hast said in thy heart i will ascend into heaven i will exalt my throne above the stars of god i will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north i will ascend above the heights of the clouds i will be like the most high Okay, what are the laws of Satan? You know, I will be like the Most High. I'll ascend into heaven. You know, trying to be like God, essentially. You know, these sinless, these sinless perfection heretics, they want to be like God. They want to be sinless like God. They're just like their father Satan. If someone teaches sinless perfection, you can just mark it off. They're a child, they're a child of the devil. Anyone who teaches sinless, sinless perfection is a child of Satan. That's simple. Okay, you're not holy without Jesus Christ. You can never be holy 100% sinless in this life. Okay, Revelation, and actually, wanna wanna quickly, actually, just can okay, close that off and just move that out of the way. It's kind of interesting because what happens to Satan? You know, he's like, I'll be like the Most High. Look at verse fifteen. Um, Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. Okay, the Satan thought he would, you know, ascend to, ascend to the throne of God and be like the Most High. Yet he was brought down to hell. To the sides of the pit. Just like these sinless perfection heretics think they're going to be like the most high, think they can be sinless like God, and when they die, they're going to wake up in hell. That's simple. Because they're not submitting themselves to the righteousness of God, righteousness of God they're trying to establish their own righteousness. Okay? But Revelation chapter 15 and verse 4. Okay? We're not holy without Jesus Christ. Okay? You're not holy. You're not a holy person. Okay? Revelation 15 4. Uh, who shall not who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. God's the only one that's holy. Okay, We're not holy without Jesus Christ. More scripture, and I'm going to close this off. Okay, But I showed you that sinless perfection is satanic. Okay, Children of the devil will do the lust of their father, Satan. Satan was self-righteous and wanted to be like the Most High. Okay, Just like sinless perfection heretics do. They think they, they can be sinless like God. Proverbs 20, verse 9. Who can say I have made my heart clean and I am pure from my sin? Who can say it? Nobody can. You can't say it without Jesus Christ. Okay? And it's not even you purifying your sins. It's Jesus Christ who does it for you. Okay? You can't say that. Uh, Psalms 51 and verse 
5. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Okay, you're born in the body of sin. You can't help it. Again, Romans 8, 3. You know, he sent his son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Your flesh is sinful. You just can't help it. Here's a really good one to use against these heretics. Uh, where is it? Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 20. For there is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. And of course, another good verse. 1 Kings 8.46 If they sin against me, for there is no man that sinneth not. And thou be angry with them and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy far and near. Okay, there's no man that sinneth not. This is again repeated. Second Chronicles chapter 6 and verse 36. If they sin against me, for there is no man which sinneth not. Okay, and it basically says the same thing. But nobody is without sin. Okay, again, you're not holy without Jesus Christ. So don't believe the heresies and the false gospel of this sinless perfection heretic. Uh, work salvation, baptism, or regeneration, heretic, watchman D. Okay, he's lost. He's on his way to hell. He's a child of Satan. So anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.